Hello everyone. Thank you for joining CMG's Tech Byte. My name is Byung In Choi. I'm working as a reservoir simulation engineer in CMG's. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use GeoGrid for geomechanics. What is GeoGrid? GeoGrid is an independent grid system to be used only for geomechanics. In left-hand side, you have your original reservoir grid, which is surrounded by outer grid systems. It represents how GeoGrid looks like. Let's take a look at it. Um, the cross-sectional view of the uh, GeoGrid systems. On the top of the reservoir grid, you can find overburden, underburden, and sideburden are being additionally attached to original reservoir grid. This outer grid is called GeoGrid. This slide explains how dual grid system works in reservoir simulations. The solid line represents original reservoir grid systems, and the dash line represents geomechanical grid systems. So these two grid systems are existing independently. So user is able to handle these two different types of grid system separately. This is the summary about key advantage of using GeoGrid. First is geomechanical grid and reservoir grid are completely independent. Overburden and underburden grid can be handled easily using GeoGrid. Using GeoGrid can reduce the computation time dramatically. Two independent grid system can be plot in separate results. Results from single and dual grid system have been found to be very comparable. This is the comparison between single grid system and dual grid systems. Typically, conventional geomechanical simulator is using single grid system. In single grid system, it is assumed geomechanical grid is always same with reservoir grid. However, CMG has developed a dual grid system. In dual grid system, it is not necessary that Geomechanical grid is always the same with reservoir grid. With these dual grid systems, user is able to handle geomechanical grid in more flexible way. So you can easily construct geomechanical grid whether your reservoir grid is complicated or not. Let's do the exercise. Please open any type of reservoir model with builders. In this exercise, I'm going to use uh, standard 3D models, uh, which is operated by CO2 injectors. In this exercise, I'm going to see how much of the subsidence will take place in CO2 sequestration scenarios. The first step is to create geomechanical options. So let's move to geomechanics options. Please find the calculation option. This is the first step to activate geomechanical options. As we have 3D models, we are going to use 3D finite elementary method for geomechanical calculations. In this exercise, 
I'm going to use one-way coupling options. Just press OK. Ignore the message. The next step is to, to define geomechanical property and what types of constitutive law we are going to use for geomechanical calculations. Please check arrow buttons. Press the add new lock types. Press OK. In here, we are asked to define what Young's modulus is used and Poisson ratio should be defined. Also, cohesion value should be defined to calculate the geomechanical behaviors. The governing equation is Moulomb based elastoplastic model. So here I'm going to specify Young's modulus. Let's say um, e to uh, six kilopascal for Young's modulus, and for Poisson ratios, I'm going to use. 0.3 for cohesion values I'm going to use e to 8 this geomechanical properties will be assigned to reservoir grid system since we have been talking about dual grid system I'm going to create the another geomechanical lock types uh, which will be assigned to overburden formations. I'm just to copy the geomechanical property from previous lock type that we defined. Then I'm going to small change it here. 0 0.2 e to 6 kilopascal for Young's modulus in second lock types. For Poisson ratio in second lock type, I'm using 0 0.2. Just apply and OK. So next step is to add up the geo grid system on the top of the reservoir grid. So go to the geomechanics grid and check the extended grid systems. As you can see here, on the top of the reservoirs, this original reservoir is being surrounded um, red box shapes, which represent the geomechanical grid. By default, uh, for geo grid system, it is assumed to use the Cartesian grid system. In this exercise, we are going to use default options. And here, um, I'm aimed to add up the overburden formation and underburden formation only in vertical directions. So I'm going to add 10 um, more layers on the top of the reservoir uh, grid systems. Also, I added up um, the underburden systems in this reservoir case. Then I need to specify grid thickness to describe the, how deep the overburden formation is um, based on the current reservoir tops, which is 100, uh, sorry, 850 meters. So I'm going to specify the grid thickness to 85. Um, all 10 layers which are above the grid top to have grid thickness of 85 meters. For underburden system, I'm going to assign 50 meters in this exercise. Just press OK. So as you can see here, apart from reservoir grid, 
you can see the extended grid system is being made in this exercise. This red box represents geomechanical grid, in other words, geogrid systems. Now press OK, please. As we create the two different lock types, we are going to assign these two lock types to reservoir grid and overburden grid systems, respectively. So, click the array properties, deformation lock types, So check uh, K bar options. Um, as I used um, 10 layers as overburden system, I'm going to assign lock deformation lock type 2 for all overburden system. And I'm going to use lock type 1 for reservoir grid systems and last 5 grid which represent underburden system so I'm going to assign again uh, deformation lock type number 2 just press OK then last step for geomechanical definitions is to define initial stress distribution in the systems. So I'm going to use 5,000 kilopascal for this one. For shear stress, is assumed to have zero for all directions. Stress gradient, so each um, each is a single meters increase the stress by 10 um, for shear stress it is not going to increase over the depths and save as different names in this case geogrid once you run the models you can see two different result type are generated from the learnings. Open these two files in result models. Um, basically, when you run the geomechanics with geogrid systems, you can have overburden system and underburden system correspondingly. Here is the comparisons. Left hand side represents the original reservoir grid systems. Um, when you open the geomechanical outputs, which is labeled geomechanics.sr3, as you can see here, overburden formation, underburden formation are being attached to your original reservoir grid. And here's we can make the output of subsidence just to take a look at it so as you can see here it's very tiny uh, levels but it's around four centimeter of subsidence happens in this ledger bus. Um, in the ledger bar, uh, the in the original ledger bar domain, so as you can see, a similar level of subsidence is detected. Thank you for your time.